Hello guys, I'm your host William and today we're going to talk about the movie Mad Max 2050. The movie takes place in a dystopian world that is still recovering from the effects of a nuclear war. There is a lot of radiation in the air, and the land is no longer good for farming. The water sources are also gone, and there is a serious lack of food, fuel, and other things that people need. The people who are still alive have all gone crazy, and they are always fighting to stay alive. Even though most of the world is now empty, a legend says that there is a city called Green Place that has enough water, food, and greenery for everyone to live. It has an extremely as well. A boring name. Next, we see a city on a cliff called the Citadel. It is a network of caves. There are a lot of survivors in the Citadel. Most of them are deformed and look like they are half dead because of the radiation and lack of food and water. The Morton Joe who runs the Citadel is a monster-like old man, who breathes through a face mask with air pipes. He also has more wives than anyone else in the city. He has five of them, to be exact. Goddamn, the radiation killed almost all of the young, beautiful women who could have had children. So only the very wealthy can afford to have five wives. Joe trades water, food, and milk for fuel and weapons with other clans in this world. He has taken control of the only source of water in Westland Aquacola as if he had made it and owned it. Besides water, he also trades breast milk. Joe has hired a group of women so that he can take their breast milk and trade it with other clans. The Gastown clan, with whom he trades for fuel, and the Bullet Farm clan, which has a lot of weapons, are people he knows well. Joe, meanwhile, talks to the crowd from a cliff and tells them that he will save them. He is also the leader of the War Boys, a group of cancer patients who are willing to die for him. Joe says that the Citadel will be rebuilt and become a successful clan stronghold. Putting it this way, he lets some water out, but only for a few seconds. When Joe turns off the water, the people go crazy and fight for it. Joe tells the crowd not to get too used to water so they won't miss it when it's not there. Joe then sends in Puro Fur to get his lieutenant, who has a fake arm to pick up fuel and bullets. Soon after, she leaves in a war rig, followed by a few war boys in smaller vehicles. Later, when Fur changes course and heads east instead of west, her war boys don't know what's going on. But because they love her so much, they don't ask for much. And I swear that when Joe hears that Fur is going in a different direction, he goes straight to his chambers and locks his wife inside. When he gets there, he can't believe that they're all gone. A sign on the wall says that their children won't be warlords, which suggests that they will have left him. Here, we learn that Fur has turned on her master and is running away with the women. In the next scene, the main character is shown to us. Max is a road warrior who is looking for a good cause right now. When he looks around at the empty place, he keeps seeing the dead people he couldn't save from the war. The war boys show up out of nowhere, so Max gets in his car and drives away. However, he doesn't get far, as the war boys destroy his car and tie him and his men up. Then they pull him to the meeting place, the cave's interior. His hair and beard are cut by the war boys. On his back, they also put tattoos, including one that says Universal Donor. Oh, no, because they want to use him to get blood. When they try to brand Max with a hot iron in the shape of a skull, he manages to get away and tell them to leave him alone. Along the way, he fights a few scavengers, but then he starts seeing the dead. This takes his attention away for a moment, which lets the war boys catch him again in the next scene. Joe tells his troops to leave. I say this word over and over to get fur. While everyone else is getting ready for war, Knox, a war boy who is almost dead, takes Max with him. Since he needs blood badly, he ties Max to his vehicle and gives him blood so that he has the constant energy he needs to fight. After this, everyone gets in their cars and drives away. Meanwhile, Fur's war rig is attacked by another scavenging tribe, Buzzards. She manages to defeat them, but soon notices the large horde of soldiers sent by. Scared. She drives into a massive sandstorm in hopes that she can lose her pursuers. Part of the plan works. Everyone who works for Joe stops except for Knox. He is so determined to make his master happy that he puts gas in his car and tries to hit it with Fur's war rig. His plan is to kill Fur and give up his life to become a martyr. He loses control of the car, though, because of the sandstorm, and it crashes near. After a while Max rises from the sand and notices that he is chained to Knox, who is still unconscious. On walking a bit further, he finds Fur's rig where the five girls are cleaning themselves up here. We get to know that one of the girls splendid is nine months pregnant with Joe's child. Max asks the girls to cut off his. This connects him to Knox, but they don't do it right now. Fur sees that Joe's men are coming from a distance. She gets ready to leave with the girls, but Max insists on being let go first. This makes the two of them fight. Max eventually beats Fur and even cuts the chain off of him. Then he gets in the war truck and drives away, leaving everyone behind. What a sham. 
As the girls think they're going to die, the rig pulls up close by. It turns out that Fur put a kill switch in the rig that only she can turn back on. Max doesn't want to let all the girls in, but he has to. He also says he will take them to a place called Green Place, which is supposed to be a safe place for girls but has a stupid name. Later, Fur drives the rig to a canyon where biker thugs called the Rock Riders are in charge. She's already done something. Them, which tells them that they can pass through the area if they pay 3,000 gallons of fuel. As Fur gets out of the truck to talk, the Rock Riders see a big group of Joe's troops coming. This goes against the agreement, since Fur said that only a few people would be passing through, not the whole city. The bikers are very angry, but before they can do anything, Fur gets into the truck and drives away. But the bikers aren't going to give up on her so easily, so they start to follow her. This leads to an exciting chase, but once again, the heroes kill the bad guys one at a time. As Joe tries to shoot at the rig, the war boys have also moved closer to it. Splendid opens the door and stands in front of everyone to protect them. She knows that Joe won't hurt their child. Surprisingly, he doesn't move because he is so set on having a child. Knox tries to cheer him up by telling him they'll get the girls back, but this makes Joe angry, so he leaves Knox behind. At the same time, Splendid trips as she tries to get back inside the rig. And false. Joe tries to save her, but he ends up running her over instead. When he stops, he finds her dead body and screams in pain. <laughs> Knox, who is upset with Joe, is able to get into the rig. He changes sides and tells the girls he will help them get away. At first, they don't trust his intentions, but when KN says he doesn't have long to live, they take him in as they drive through them. Their rig gets stuck in the mud all of a sudden. Worse yet, the bullet farmer gang starts coming toward them. It turns out that Joe sent the rest of the group in and then came back with a lot of water. Now it looks like all hope is lost. Knox thinks of something. He tells Max to tie a rope around a tree so the rig can use it as leverage. Surprisingly, the plan works, and the group gets out of there before the enemies do. The next morning, Max wakes up in the rig, seeing the dead fur everywhere. She tells him to get some rest while she tells him about the green place where she was born and where she was taken when she was a child. She wants redemption, and so do Joe's wives. After a while, they chose to leave the citadel. They get to a place in the desert with a tower where a woman named Valerie is screaming for help, but Max thinks it's a trap. Furs gets out of the rig and starts shouting her mother's name and the name of her clan, Seeds. Soon, Valerie climbs down the tower, and a few other old women on bikes join her. They all have a happy moment when they see each other again after many years. After this, Fur asks where the green place is. But, to her horror, the women tell her that the place is now deserted and no longer a good place to live. They say that the muddy swamp they went through used to be green, but now it is poisonous and can't grow anything. They also say that the last of their clan's mothers has been dead for a long time. When a broken fur hears all of this, she falls to her knees and sobs. In the late evening, fur tells Max that the seeds will help them find a new home by riding across the salt flats. The only problem is that to get there, they have to leave the rig and ride bikes for about 160 days. Max hates the idea, as expected, and tells fur that he won't be joining them. Max has a terrible dream about his dead daughter the next morning. Everyone is gone by the time he wakes up. Max realizes that he can't keep making the same mistakes that led to the death of his daughter. So, he quickly drives to the bikers, stops them, and tells them to go back to Sita, which has a lot of water and crops to eat. Also, there are no guards there now because Joe and the war boys are after them. After giving it a lot of thought, Fur comes to the conclusion that Max is right. Soon, the group rides in the rig with the seeds on bikes following behind. Joe sees the rig heading toward the canyon and figures out that they are going back to the citadel since it's unguarded. Worried. He tells his men right away to go after the rig. After chasing the war at high speed for a while, the boys finally catch up with Fur's rig, which starts a brutal war. Several of Joe's men get killed, but the bikers also kill some of the good guys. When a war boy jumps on her with a dagger, she is also hurt. Even though the war was getting worse by the minute, Fur and her group found a way to win. She is able to get on Joe's rig with the help of Knox. The two then start fighting while the car is moving but Fur stops the fight in the end. When she puts Joe's mask on the wheels, his face comes off and he dies right away. Even though the leader has been killed, the war boys are still fighting hard right now. Knox, who is driving a big fuel tanker, comes up with a plan. He has been abused and taken advantage of his whole life, so he wants to die with a good. In short, he wants to help the girls get away from the cruel war. Boys. Soon, he swerves his car around wildly and crashes into a rock. All of the war boys are killed when there is a big explosion. Knox also dies, which is sad, but it was a choice he made a long time ago. 
On the way to the citadel, Fur gets very weak and falls apart in other places. As the other girls start to panic, Max steps in. He helps Fur breathe by making a small cut under her lungs. When the plan fails, he gives her a blood transfusion from himself. The procedure works, and Fur's eyes slowly start to open. As soon as the group gets to the citadel, Max shows everyone Joe's mouthful corpse, which gets everyone excited. Yeah, the war boys and other people from the citadel rip Joe's body apart because they are glad that the cruel rule is finally over. Then, they start shouting that Fur and Joe's wives should be allowed into the cave because they are the real leaders and the people are against Fur and Joe. Joe's war boys do what they're told, but they don't want to. They make the women in charge of them angry, and her group looks out over the whole crowd. She sees Max leaving the restaurant in silence. Now that he has done what he said he would do, he will go to new places where people need help. The movie ends when the cave lets out an endless amount of water, causing everyone to get all worked up. And the story end here. What do you think about this story? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like the video, subscribe and activating bell for notification until the next video. Thank you so much for watching.